All right, so up next we have the uh, Droid Razor. So we had some extensive time with this a couple weeks ago in NYC. Droid Razor box, by the way. And uh, we're back with it uh, just a few weeks later since it comes out in just a couple of days. Here's the packaging. Nice packaging as you would expect on these Droid branded phones. Um, on the inside, Droid Razor by Motorola. So this obviously is merging two iconic brands, the Droid brand and the Razor brand. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull the phone out. Get to that in just one second. See what else is in the box. Micro USB charger, Motorola. These like Motorola's doing these new dual charging um, ports, which is really cool. I got one with the Moto Active, so definitely like another doing that. Otherwise, just documentation in there. No need to look at that. So let's get into the phone. I'll just go ahead and peel off the sticker. Oh, there, I got it. Okay. Anyway, Droid Razor, so 1.2 gigahertz, dual core, OMAP 4430 processor, giga RAM, eight megapixel camera on the back, 1.3 megapixel camera on the front that can actually do 720p video. Um, Android 2.3.5, I believe. It's running Motorola's Moto Blur, locked bootloader, all that good stuff. Um, let's do a quick tour of that outside 4.3 inch QHD screen so while the Razer is a 720p HD and so is the Galaxy Nexus this one's just QHD which is 960 by 540 I'll have to double check that but I believe that's the resolution um, see it's got soft keys down there so it's not ice cream sandwich with you know an ice cream sandwich device with no keys whatsoever um, there is your front let's go ahead and look at the side and this is where it shines see how thin this device is so over here if you pop open this little housing, this is your micro SIM and your micro SD slot. And you're probably wondering why they're on there on the outside and not under the battery. That's because there is no removable battery. Motorola built it right in, no removable battery. They're expecting this to actually last long enough um, on a single charge. They think they've done enough you know, tweaks to uh, software and LTE and hardware and all that stuff to make the battery actually last and you won't need to go get an extended. So. Super thin, battery built in, micro SD and micro SIM there. Also, it looks like we've got a mic down here. Oh, mic right there on the front. There you go. Um, also on the back, though, yeah, 8 megapixel camera. I believe it's newer or at least been adjusted from the Bionic, so it should be faster. It should take crisper, clearer pictures. Um, you do have a flash up there, speaker up top there as well. Um, on the other side is your volume rocker and your lock switch. So Motorola's kind of gone with that Samsung side lock switch. Huge fan of that. I mean, we all hold our phone like this in our hand. It's really nice if you can just unlock and lock right there and adjust volume. So I'm really glad that they've sort of done that. Then on top, you have your three and a half millimeter headphone jack and here is your HDMI and your micro USB. They had to put them on top since there was really nowhere to put them on the side and they also threw this other port down here. Also, I'm assuming those ports are thick enough that they can only be housed in this thick part. Okay, so to keep it thin, they had to house the LTE radio, camera, and these two ports all on this top part. Okay, so as I was saying earlier with the Resound, this phone definitely feels wider in your hand. To me, it doesn't feel uncomfortable by any means, but it's definitely wider. So let me grab the Resound for you. So it's sort of tough to tell on camera which one's wider. Well, I mean, you can tell the Droid Razor is wider, but can't necessarily tell it's a ton wider, but just holding in hand, you can definitely tell a difference. Plus, the uh, Resound is completely round and smooth, and the Razer, you know, is sort of boxier. Not that it's sharp and gonna, you know, hurt your hand or anything, although it is a Razer, so that would be sort of funny. But it, but you can definitely feel it in your hand. Um, it's incredibly light. Obviously, it's one of the world's thinnest smartphones. I believe it's 7.1 or 7.2 millimeters thick, so uh, incredibly light feels good. Let's go ahead and power it up, though. Just give you guys a quick look at it. So, dual core processor, I said, 1.2 gigahertz, um, giga RAM, 4.3 inch QHD screen, dual cameras, Moto Blur, Android 2.3.5, whole bunch of built in software that Motorola hopes you will use, like Moto Cast. It used to be called Zumo Cast. It was like a, basically, it was a bridge from your any of your PCs to your phones. So you can pull documents, can, uh, pictures, music, media, all that stuff. Um, now it's called Motocast, and they've actually built it into Blur. Um, rather than being a standalone app like it was with ZumoCast, it's actually built into like the Gallery app, your music app, things like that. So they've really sort of stepped up their game in the uh, Blur department. Obviously, some of us aren't a fan of Blur, but 
All right, let's see if we can go ahead and skip this. I just hit home. Let's see if the old trick works. The four corner trick. Oh, it did, sure enough. Four corner trick still works. Oh, maybe not. Setup is not complete. Yes, exit. Backup assistant. God, I hate backup assistant. And I have no idea what that is. Get to know your device. Please get me out of this. Please touch exit. Oh, right there. Sorry. Okay. So, setup. I'll do that later. You can see we are on 4G LTE up there. Okay. So, um, new blur. Let me go back to the lock screen because this is actually different. So, new lock screen. You can either unlock or you can jump straight into your camera. And speaking of cameras, let's go ahead and take a picture so we can see how fast this is since I forgot to do this when I was in New York. All right, folks. Jump back in there. Okay, camera, let's take a picture of the resound. And focus. Focus still pretty slow. Camera was definitely fast. Like you can just snap picture. All right, that's pretty fast. So that might not be Galaxy Nexus fast. But once it focuses, let's take a picture of something we can actually see. There we go. Focus, snap. All right, that's actually pretty fast. So. I can't tell what the quality is going to be like on here yet, but that was actually pretty good. So anyway, um, the other thing I forgot to mention is it is a 4.3 QHD screen, but it's different than the Bionic and the Droid 3. It's Super AMOLED Advanced. And as far as I know, that's essentially like a Super AMOLED. Well, I guess it's not because it's still sort of pentile, I believe. Anyway, what I was told by a motor rep is that it's like Super AMOLED Plus, but it's QHD, so it's not... 800 by 480 resolution. It's 960 by 540. I don't know that I necessarily believe that it's not a uh, pentile, but it's going to look a lot more beautiful than the Bionics. You can see just flicking through stuff. You don't get that sort of blur and, and jittery and you know all that nonsense that we that you get. Um, you can actually flick through these and everything doesn't go blurred. So anyway, tons of blow wear in here as well. Uh, let's actually see if we can look at that blowware on the Bion or on the Razer. Oh, not that bad actually. They must have left some of out what they consider blowware because I'm pretty sure there's more. Anyway, this is the Droid Razer. We just wanted to quickly show you that. Um, here's the HTC Resound. We'll be giving these a full, full, full review over the next couple of weeks and uh, let you guys know exactly what we're talking about. Oh, let's talk about thickness real quick. You can see how ridiculously thin the Droid Razer is compared to the compared to the uh, resound. So anyway, I just want to show you that real quick. Anyway, we'll have more at the blog. Check us out. We're Droid Life, and we're out. Peace.